So what I would like to do today is um, actually to do to go through um, the spinal movement. Actually, I'm going to build the whole class uh, based on spinal movement. So we do spinal movement in in various ways. We do it. We we'll of course do it in the way that the Simon um, taught. Although uh, the way he he teaches. Um, spinal movement today is not exactly the same when he taught it uh, years ago. So, um, but the idea is, I think, is uh, that we want to understand spinal movement um, better. And one way to understand it better is by doing it in 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 many different ways. So um, we have been. Um, practicing moving the spine, um, I mean, eventually. We try to move the spine one vertebrae at a time, but um, this is a, um, you know, this is a pro there's a process to it. And eventually, I think it's not that important whether you really move one vertebrae at a time. But then you're able to move your spine in many segments and knowing which part of the spine is, is very stiff, and you focus on those parts, right? Uh, for example, um, I have been focused on uh, my middle back, which is um, the area where the thoracic spine joins the, um, uh, the lumbar spine. So I try to focus on that part uh, when I um, backbend, right? So um, this is a bit of a, out of this subject that we're doing. But the idea is that um, you, um, if you want to move that part, that you will need to prevent um, the other parts from moving because other parts move, move too easily, right? So for example, what I, what I do is I will round up my upper back and I will round up my, mid, my lower back and then I will push my middle back in. You see, this is round up, this is round up, and then I push the, push the middle back. Do you, do, you, do you see it? Okay, so this is an effort that, uh, that it's, it's a, this, to me, this is the effort to eventually, um, we say, to, to try to move your spine one vertebrae at a time. It's really to focus first uh, from observation that which part of the spine, or, or there might be more than one part, that, that doesn't move, that don't move. And then you try to uh, use different ways, like what I, what I just showed you, to, to try to create movement. So, um, so we have, uh, so far in general, we, we divide the spine. This means from the, from the, from the, from the base of the spine, all the way up to, say, the neck. So we don't include the neck, right? And then we, we divide it into the, uh, into the lower spine, middle, uh, lower back, middle back, and upper back. We consider mainly the trunk. And this is also um, when we, um, um, when Simon, um, now he emphasizes on um, the five-dimensional six-dimensional or five-dimensional uh, flow, right? Um, so, um, so this is the trunk movement. So we're going to try to uh, use this uh, not only in the, in the forward bend and back bend, and uh, actually we have been using this also in the twist, right? We twist from the navel and then the rib cage and then the chest. And then if we want, we add the shoulders, and then we, 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 we turn, we turn the, the um, we open the elbow, the, the, the elbows. But we, we can also begin to use this for spinal lengthening. So you will lengthen the lower back and middle back and upper back, right? You see it? So, so this is actually, um, you, you actually lengthen the trunk without involving the shoulders much. Because usually what we do is, we do this, right? We lift the shoulders up, which is very convenient. We will always want to do that, because this is a, 
The shoulders are very helpful, but we also want to develop um, the kind of uh, uh, sensitivity and then the, the control of the trunk muscle. And this is one, from one point of view, I actually discovered this more from uh, Master Young's uh, calligraphy house because of movements such as this, this, this ribbon, you know. Because you will have to first, you, you, you are lifting the trunk upwards before the shoulders. So, so there's a process. You initiate from the core, and then you lift the trunk as if you, and one of his, um, this is it's also because of one of his instructions, verbal instructions. He said to lift the organs, to lift the organs, right? So this is a very uh, useful instruction because shoulders are obviously not organs. So you're actually really thinking of lifting the trunk upwards. It's, 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 it's much more delicate than just bending the spine forward because then you can involve the spine. Theoretically, you, when you lengthen the spine, you are moving the spine, of course, but you are merely trying to separate the vertebrae, which is not easy, you know. It's much easier just to, just to bend the spine, right? But to lift this, to, 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 to separate the, the vertebrae, just using the trunk muscle without using the shoulders much is challenging. So today we're going to use these three sections to, uh, of, the, of the trunk to do spinal movement. So we will do something like this. So we'll have So here I have a first click is my is the core or the the base of spine. And then the second click is the it's 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 the it's the middle spine. It's the it's the it's the, it's the middle back and then the third click is the upper back. The fourth click is the shoulders, and sixth click, uh, the, the fifth click is the, is the elbows, and then the sixth click is the fingertip, right? So there is a, there is progressively lifting the energy upwards or lifting the whole trunk upwards and all the way until uh, the fingertips. And to, to, to put it more clearly, the reason I lift my fingertips up it's actually, this is not a point. The point is actually use the fingertip to reach upwards so I can lift the trunk higher, right? So the whole thing is about the trunk or the spine. And we do the similar thing with the, um, with, with the sideways bending. So we'll begin from the, from the, from the lower back, from the, from the lower part, it's gonna go this way. One way you can probably do is actually do a, a, a on a, a pelvic hike on the opposite side, which means you lift this side, this is my left side. If I lift my, lift my right hips, if I hike my right hips, actually lengthen this part, you feel it? This is eventually is, is this, this movement. If you look at it, this hip is higher, right? I'm lifting this hip higher in order to lengthen the left. So it, there's a little bit of this, this feeling that you're hiking the hip, maybe uh, the pelvis a little bit, so you have here. And then middle back, and then the, 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 and then the, the, the rib cage, the chest, and shoulders, and elbows, and so on. Does that make sense to you? Yes. But, um, but could you feel it when, when so later, later we, we, we are, we're going to try it. It's not, it's not so easy because um, we rely on the shoulders to lift the spine um, too often. And, and from one point of view, just let me finish this. From one point of view, you are uh, just using an a external force. You're using something to pull. Um, um, the rest of the body, is it not? 
And we're talking about not to use external force. Of course, this is not exactly external force, but we want to make the trunk, you know, more. Um, it's able to take care of itself, and then it can receive more help. Yes, what are you gonna say? Well, that's the to that's totally the point. The, you know, the the um, the reasons. There's underlying reasons for all these uh, new ways or these different ways to do things. It's just to keep our mind engaged, so we're more focused. Because, um, you know, this is this is supposed to provide. Uh, I mean, um, it. it it provides a, a meditative layer. And when you're learning it, it's not, um, it, it, you are basically, your attention just go there. It's not exactly meditation. It's like you, you know, when you're playing computer game, you're entirely focused on, on what is happening. But you, can you call that meditation? No. No. Right? So, 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 the, um, so at that point, the tension is just going somewhere, but once you are once you are able to, um, once once you have um, complete, uh, you, you you have um, um, you have learned it, and then you have uh, already mastered the, this 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 technique, and then this instruction serves as a vehicle, and so it, it keep your awareness alive, that you are able to constantly. Be aware of what you're doing, and at that time, the the attention goes in in two different ways. One is one direction; the attention goes to what is happening. The other direction goes towards yourself. So the attention is divided. That you are you are aware of something that is happening, but you are also aware of yourself. This is the difference between the focus, such as playing computer game, and um, the so-called the mindfulness is, is the attention is divided. So anyway, so we're gonna do some of this, and then we will also do um, um, the. We will also we we'll probably will just begin with a standard um, how we do spinal movement, and then we're going to begin to um, to to divide the trunk or the spine. Within the trunk region, into three sections, we'll try try that for several rounds because it's a bit new. And then at some point, we're going to involve into some of the um, um, the this this movement. And then we're gonna actually go into the figure eight for a little bit just to get familiar with the pattern. And then we're gonna use this um, to do a few rounds of spinal movement. And then we'll also use the opposite figure eight, which is actually just this movement, right? And we'll, again, we're going to familiar, the, we're, we're, we're gonna um, get familiar with, with this movement, perhaps even go to some of this movement. But eventually we'll come back and then to, um, to see how much we can use this pattern to move the spine in its seven direction. We'll try to we'll try to try to do this use the same movement pattern to lengthen the spine, flex, extend, and sideways bending, and then ro rotate the spine. And then later on we are going to use um, um, this is something I came up with. Um, I have I did it for for some time and um, I even actually Maybe it's shot a video, but that was at least a year ago that um, I was experimenting in moving the spine uh, in spiral way. So which means I'm doing this, 
This is my, my first spiral, my second spiral, my third spiral, fourth spiral, fifth spiral, sixth spiral. It's a little bit similar to, to this, but the intention is different because you, you're visualizing a spiral movement that is going upwards. Of course, you can also do it this way, right? But um, I do it this, I do it, the, the emphasis is, is the curve is here because our spine is in the back. I do this spiral for, for back bend. This, for me, this, the, this spiral doesn't work very well for, for back bend. It works very well for forward bend, you see. See, each spiral I have. So the point or the, um, not the trick, but the, my technique is that you focus on each spiral at different part. So the first spiral is on your lower back, it's very clear. The second spiral is on your middle back. The third spiral, spiral is on the, on the upper back. The fourth spiral is on the shoulders. The sixth spiral is on the elbows. And, and then and so on, if you, if you go any further. And then it will be the, um, uh, it will be the same thing with the, uh, with, with the sideway bending, so we do here. At, at some movement, it might not be clear, but what will help you most is your spiral needs to be clear. Your spiral, I mean, the, your mental image of where the spiral is going and how it's shaped need to be very, very clear. Because if that is not clear, you cannot make, make, make this clear. So, so, so you, you have to have a very clear visual image of what this spiral is doing and at what part of the body. And then, the, and then uh, with, and, and the, the spiral to the, to the um, uh, cr twisting is also possible. So I have my, my, lower, my lower trunk. It's uh, not perhaps, not always effective. I think each way of doing spinal movement is good. Um, um, it's, it's, it, can be, it can be effective in some ways, perhaps not others. But what, we, what we're trying to do is just, just you know, to, um, to understand the spinal movement a little bit more through these um, different ways to approach them.